And here's an experiment using uh, a GeForce, NVIDIA GeForce GPU. This is the 8800 GS. It uses the G80 uh, GPU. Um, and in this experiment, what I'm doing is simply benchmarking the CUFFT library, in this case, all the way up to uh, around um, about 4.25, 4.3 um, million samples. And I express those results in terms of what I call processing intensity, which is a number of samples uh, per second. And so what I'm achieving here is about 1.5 times 10 to the 8 samples per second. That's on a GPU that costs about 50 bucks. You can go out and buy this today. So I then create a process schedule. This is uh, this is the, for example, is the instance of uh, a single uh, one of those ultra-large Radix flies on a single GPU. This is on all four GPUs, one after another ad nauseum until you finish out the queue. And right here, uh, I'm assuming a single CPU architecture. The, these are the various operations going on on the CPU. For example, assembling the work units, assembling the phase factor and address shuffle operators and so on and so forth. And the idea, this is a map and reduce, it's a standard map and reduce problem, optimal bin filling problem, actually. So um, uh, part of our secret sauce is how we do the scheduling, but actually the mathematics of it is very straightforward. So why the billion point FFT? I just picked the number out of the air and I, in, in talking with Curtis, I said, well, what's gonna grab their attention? And we, both, we came up with the billion point FFT. But the billion point FFT uh, is, is really not the issue because we can scale this as large as you want it, subject to the, the memory constraints of the system and uh, the communication constraints of the system. Actually, it's arbitrarily large, but at, of course, at some point, um, uh, interprocessor communication bandwidth and internode communication bandwidth come to the fore. And, and so there are, all that I will say at that point is that different optimization strategies and constraints come to the fore. And so the scheduling problem for something the size of a billion point FFT, which can be done on a single workstation, is going to be different than a trillion point FFT, which is going to have to be scattered onto a cluster. So what you're looking at here is an experiment that I've run, and I'm, I apologize if this is not very visible, but what I'm using um, is uh, a Radix 1024 fly, and actually that's not optimal. I can use much larger flies than this. Um, the num I'm using four GPUs, three stages, the number of samples is about uh, 1.07 uh, billion. And what I do here is extract the, uh, the GPU processing time per fly, the GPU uh, read and write times, so on and so forth. I, I plug these numbers back into my process schedule, do the optimal bin filling, if you will, calculate an effective parallelization fraction, and then also calculate a total runtime, so on and so forth. So what, what you're seeing here is the FFT processing time, and in this last step, I extrapolated it. Um, and my runtime uh, on a four uh, 8800 GS array is about, um, um, the maximum is a, a bit over four. Let's see, it's on here. Yes, right here, this number. Um, that's about four seconds. The minimum time is a little over two seconds. And the reason why I express it this way is if, if I am dumb about the scheduling, I lose about half my processing gain. If I'm smart about it, I get close to optimal, which is about four, which is four. The processing gain is four. So here I'm seeing a processing gain, I think it's about, I can't quite read that, is about 1.8, I think, something like that. It's, it's, it's pretty good. Anyway, uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, and the number of samples again, 1.07 times 10 to the nine full complex. So what, um, I'm just gonna give a quick summary here. Um, what we achieve is essentially arbitrary FFT order scaling. Um, and uh, again, we're leveraging a, a pipeline processing of these ultra-large radix flies. 
our GPA processing is somewhere in the area, our processing gain is somewhere in the area of 0 0.5 times the number of GPUs uh, up to actual number of GPUs. So, uh, and it's extensible to cluster architectures, 1D, 2D, 3D. This approach should be applicable to wavelet processing. Structurally, it's definitely applicable, but some of the basis functions used in wavelets look pretty nasty, so I'd have to have to check on that. I have to run some experiments, actually. And here's where the rubber hits the road. We get an order of magnitude price performance improvement, even with the older generation of, of GPUs. If you look at the life cycle cost, it's probably two orders of magnitude improvement. This stuff is all COTS, commercial off-the-shelf stuff, including the operating system, the, the tools that you use, so on and so forth. Now we're into uh, uh, the, um, the, for example, the NVIDIA GPUs, uh, they've introduced the um, uh, T10P GPU, which has 240 thread processors um, per GPU. The, this experiment, the previous experiment, uh, was based on uh, just 96 uh, uh, thread processors per GPU, plus about 100 gigabytes per second of of CPU to GPU communication capability. That's what the latest generation of PCIe X16. Um, and, all, and, and also a further uh, optimized, uh, more highly optimized uh, texture cache as well. And development tools. Visual C, GCC, NVIDIA CUDA libraries, our software framework, and then uh, for most of our applications, I also build equivalent or, or comp, um, um, equivalent uh, MATLAB functions so that uh, from the MATLAB IDE, you can, you can call these uh, tremendous capabilities or access these capabilities. And we use the MEX interface for that, for building those DLLs. So what we have here is a new class of supercomputer uh, it's based on the CPU GPA architectural template. It's extensible to multi-core CPU and cluster. And the, the focus here is acceleration of complete scientific applications. And this is distinct, as I've mentioned, and for reasons I've mentioned, from the uh, coprocessor model. And what we achieve is highly efficient parallel processing over diverse kernels. And we have excellent scaling properties. As, I, as I've said, we've, we've scaled over three decades, and, and uh, there's no reason to think we can't go further. Unmatched price performance. And all you have to do is compare the, these COTS prices for assembling a workstation like this with VLIW and Superscalar workstations. And then uh, the, the, using our technology, uh, you can gain some major advantage over competing acceleration technologies, in particular the FPGA-based accelerators. Um, and that's it. Questions? <laughs>